Another player has gone down this NBA season with an Achilles injury. This time it happened with Mavericks player Dwight Powell. Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In this video, we're gonna go frame by frame, taking a look at the injury that happened here to Dwight Powell. We'll focus on a couple of key concepts that are often involved whenever someone has an Achilles rupture so that hopefully you can learn a little bit more about what's going on in the body when this happens. Make sure and subscribe if you like this type of content and want to stay up to date with my future videos. And let's get started. Let's just run this first through in full speed so you guys can see real time what happened. Powell, of course, gets the ball he takes off driving in goes down immediately and then we can tell that there was obvious pain and something wrong going on with that ankle the two key concepts to understand are eccentric and concentric muscle contraction eccentric is whenever the muscle is contracting while it's being stretched or lengthened and concentric is whenever the muscle is contracting while it's being shortened so a perfect example of this is whenever you're holding a dumbbell in your arm if you're holding it and lowering your arm, you're lengthening your biceps, which is eccentric. If you're holding it curling up, you're shortening your biceps, that's concentric. Here we can see Pal has the ball, and we're gonna go through this slowly, but right here, keep a close eye on this right foot. So as Pal steps back with that right foot, you can tell here he plants that right foot into the ground right here. During this position, he's eccentrically loading his Achilles tendon. As he plants that right foot and gets ready to push off here, you can tell how it's stretching or lengthening that Achilles tendon as he further kind of sinks his foot into that position to push off. Then as we advance forward, now he's starting to push off. And so now we switch from an eccentric contraction to a concentric contraction. And this is what causes the Achilles to get injured. As he's going here, he pushes and that concentric motion is that push off. So again, if we back this up a little bit, foot plants into the ground, eccentric loading as the calf muscle is contracting but it's being stretched and then as he pushes off right here concentric loading which then causes the achilles to get injured again just another view of this that right foot goes and plants right there eccentric loading of the tendon now he pushes concentric loading of the tendon and of course this is the view that you've probably seen by now but really tells the full picture here keep a close eye on kind of the curve of his calf muscle and you can actually see the snap from that recoil from whenever the Achilles gets injured. So again, foot goes back, plants, eccentric loading starts, that eccentric loading stresses the tendon excessively, concentric as he pushes, and then boom, right there you can see that snap and the recoil of the calf muscle going back up the leg. Let's play that through just one more time here, and I'm going to run it in kind of regular slow-mo speed. Foot plants back, boom, there you see that snap, pushes off, and that's where the injury occurs. Muscles and tendons are especially susceptible to injuries under these eccentric loads. There's additional microtrauma in the muscle and the tendon, and so things like hamstring injuries also commonly occur under an eccentric type of load. If you're also wondering here how the team already is concerned about an Achilles rupture, these are pretty easy to diagnose without an MRI. The Achilles tendon is very superficial, meaning it's very close to the skin, and there's pretty good physical exam tests that we can do to look for any signs of a full rupture. The exam maneuver is called the Thompson test, where you basically squeeze the calf muscle and look for that movement of the foot pointing down. If the foot points down, that means that the tendon is somewhat intact, but if there's no movement whatsoever of the foot pointing down, that suggests there could be a rupture of the tendon. Also, ultrasound is a really great tool if the doctors are proficient in using it there at the arena, because you can put the ultrasound probe right on the skin and you can see the Achilles tendon really, really well follow it along its length and look for any signs of a tear or of a rupture. That's it for the video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. I hope you guys learned something here specifically about that difference between eccentric muscle loading and concentric muscle loading and how it applies here to an Achilles tendon injury. We'll see you in the next one.